Hello, good morning and welcome to St Peter's West Knighton for morning prayer on Friday the 26th of January. It's the Lesser Festival of Timothy and Titus and we're using Common Worship's Epiphany Season. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let your, your light springs up for the righteous and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the Son of Righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your Spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. May be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> the appointed psalmody at the back of the red book, if you're following there, is 61 and 65, Psalms 61 and 65. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. Hear my crying, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you with fainting heart. O set me on the rock that is higher than I. For you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever <clears throat> and take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O God, will hear my vows. You will grant a request of those who fear your name. You will add length of days to the life of the king, that his years may endure throughout all generations. May he sit enthroned before God forever. May steadfast love of truth watch over him. So will I always sing praise to your name, and day by day fulfil my vows. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. We we'll use the prayers that follow in silence. Be joyful in God, all the earth. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion. 
To you that answer prayer shall vows be paid. To you shall all flesh come to confess their sins. When our misdeeds prevail against us, you will purge them away. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your court to dwell there. We shall be satisfied with the blessings of your house, even of your holy temple. With wonders you will answer us in our righteousness, O God of our salvation. O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, in your strength you set fast the mountains and are girded about with might. You still the raging of the seas, <coughs> the roaring of their waves, and the clamour of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth tremble at your marvels. The gates of the morning and evening sing your praise. When you visit the earth and water it, you make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare grain for your people, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. You soften the ground with showers and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the pastures of the wilderness flow with goodness, and the hills be girded with joy. May the meadows be clothed with flocks of sheep, and the valleys stand so thick with corn that they shall laugh and sing. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Be joyful in God, all the earth. And so to the canticle in morning prayer during Epiphany, a song of the new Jerusalem. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth, and darkness the peoples. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land, all ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation, and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight, nor moonlight shine upon you. But the Lord will be your everlasting light, your God will be your splendour. For you shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. <clears throat> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. On the day following the conversion of St. Paul, the Church remembers his two companions, Timothy and Titus, whom he describes as partners and fellow workers in God's service, and to whom the so-called pastoral epistles are dedicated. Timothy, we are told, was a native of Lystra in Asia Minor, who had a Jewish mother and a Greek father, whilst Titus was Holy Greek. And it was because of Titus that Paul stood out against the compulsory circumcision. But to avoid suspicion from other Jews, Paul insisted that Timothy be circumcised. Christian tradition associates Timothy with the Christian community at Ephesus and Titus with the care of the Christian community in Crete, where he is honoured as the first bishop of Gortina. Both men are honoured in the church for their devotion and faithfulness to the gospel. Genesis 16, our first Bible reading this morning. Genesis 16. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bore him no children. She had an Egyptian slave girl whose name was Hagar, and Sarai said to Abram, You see the slave that you see that the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my slave girl. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. 
Hagar. So after Abram had lived for ten years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian, her slave girl, and gave her to her husband Abram as a wife. He went into Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. Then Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my slave girl to your embrace. When she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Your slave girl is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she ran away from her. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur, and he said, Hagar, hey, slave girl of Sarai, where have you come from, and where are you going? She said, I am running away from my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her. <coughs> the angel of the Lord also said to her, I will so greatly multiply your offspring that they cannot be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Now you have conceived and shall bear a son. You shall call him Ishmael, for the Lord has given heed to your affliction. He shall be a wild ass of a man with his hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him, and he shall live at odds with all his kin. So she named the Lord who spoke to her, You are El Roy, for she said, I have I really seen God and remained alive after seeing him. Therefore the well was called Beer Lahai Roy. It lies between Kadesh and Bered. Hagar bore Abram a son, <coughs> and Abram named his son, whom Hagar bore Ishmael. <coughs> Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. Here we have an early example <coughs> of the person appointed by God to be the ancestor although Abraham in particular Abram <coughs> being noted as a man of faith gets himself self into a number of scrapes God had promised him a child <coughs> to be the father of many and uh, things were getting on and he hadn't had a child with Sarai and so as the slave was effectively seen as an extension of the owner <coughs> and both under the property of the man he effectively could have children I guess with whomsoever he pleased and so <coughs> he had a child with an Egyptian <coughs> slave. And um, I think what intrigues me, apart, I mean, the, the human failure, as it were, is recorded, and that's surprising given that Abraham, Abraham was, is venerated to such an extent. It's a very honest narrative. But I would have imagined the story would have stopped Sarai dealt harshly with the slave girl and she ran away and that would have been that. But no, God turns up, arguably a human manifestation of God, and as Christians we would say that was Jesus, if we can get our heads around that, and talks to this woman who's going to have a child <coughs> by the normal means. And this angel of the Lord says, return to your mistress. The angel of the Lord tells Hagar what to call the child. I have given heed. <coughs> well, God hears, I guess, is what that is. Ishmael, for the Lord has given heed to your affliction. I'm just basing that interpretation on the way the Hebrews write. So they give a name and then they explain the meaning of the name. <coughs> then there's a fairly typical patriarchal blessing here given by this angel of the Lord rather than by the parent or grandparent of the child but it's been said of him that he will be a wild ass of a man with his hand against everyone <coughs> and then remarkably having had the child she was carrying named by the angel of the Lord she names the angel of the Lord now just described as the Lord, who spoke to her, you are El Roy. 
So God gives heed and she sees God, the God seen, I guess that means. Again, we have that explanation of the name, you are Elroy, have I really seen God? And remained alive after seeing him. So there's a heeding and a seeing between God and the outsider that is creative and productive and indeed continues God's promise because God's promise to Abram of being the father of many. has clearly had an effect on this child because the angel of the Lord says, I will greatly multiply your offspring so they cannot be counted for multitude. <coughs> so just as we remembered Paul yesterday, speaking to the Gentiles, those that were outside the core group, speaking to the outsiders, as we remember in this epiphany season, God making himself known to the shepherds and uh, the so-called wise men. This story is ideal for the season, as showing God's blessing on the outsider, even one whom the insiders, like Paul, thought little of. Matthew 26 from 57 then, Matthew 26 from 57, our second reading. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, at last two came forward and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the son of God. Jesus said to him, you have said so, but I tell you from now on, you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, he has blasphemed, why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard this, his blasphemy, what is your verdict? They answered, he deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. Some slapped him saying, prophesy to us, you Messiah, who is it that struck you? <coughs> now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, you also were with Jesus the Galilean, but he denied it before all of them saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him and she said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, certainly you are also one of them for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. It's one of the harshest, darkest, most isolating, upsetting, dramatic. endings of readings, possibly in scripture. Yesterday we had this being set up with Jesus at the end of his Passover meal with his friends saying they would deny him <coughs> and Peter saying he wouldn't even if it led to his death. <coughs> and uh, one can see sort of a three part, three act play developing this most remarkably perhaps with the interval at this stage but maybe not with refreshments. We may need dark corners to go and hide and cry. I was intrigued on reading it that Jesus was taken to Caiaphas's house. I don't know whether that was, because I suppose a high priest's house might have been his official residence. Houses anyway were much more 
open and had sort of, if you like, public areas in them, certainly the grand houses. <coughs> so they might have done their official business in their grand house anyway. Um, in these days, taking somebody to a, to a house or private property of a warlord, if you like, um, would be definitely outside the normal avenues of justice. <clears throat> but then we hear the false witnesses saying, reporting Jesus said, I'm able to destroy the temple, build it in three days. <coughs> we know if we look back at that story, he was talking about himself as being the temple, developing that idea that we still use today of us being living stones in God's temple, receptacles of his spirit leaking and earth, and, but nevertheless bearing his presence. And then there's no answer. Then Jesus is asked, are you this Messiah? And he says, you have said so. But then he gives a, an ambiguous response, which may refer to him. He called himself the son of man. <coughs> but he doesn't, in general, but he doesn't on the, in this occasion. He just says, you will see effectively someone seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. And for saying that, the scribes and elders with Caiaphas are of the view that he should be put to death. And then they start to mock him. Peter is then accused by a servant girl, as we have read earlier today, somebody who was worth nothing. <coughs> then another servant girl, so that's two women's testimony equivalent to a man's. And then we're told the bystanders came up. So there's a number which presumably includes men. <coughs> and then he says, having said, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know the man. I don't know the man. <coughs> and then it is morning, the cock crows. And as we have it, as I said earlier, we have that proper cliffhanger ending what becomes of him does he go and hang himself do we ever hear of him again does he become a mock mocking byword for betrayal and desertion so let us turn to morning prayer once again for the responsory back in the red book O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day, let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth tremble before him. <coughs> And if you look up today's date for Timothy and Titus, you'll find direction there. I don't know if they would be apostles, but to the common of saints or some such. For the refrain, which begins, Christ gave, otherwise join in when we get to blessed be. <coughs> Unless you have it on your app already. So, the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. Christ gave them as a light to the nations, that his salvation might reach to the ends of the earth. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. <coughs> to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. 
in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Christ gave them as a light to the nations that his salvation might reach to the ends of the earth. Let us pray. Sovereign Saviour Spirit One in three, three in one We thank you that you came among us Lived as human As you visited Hagar A woman wronged and offended A foreigner abused by your people or the ancestor of your people. Nevertheless, the blessing that was on him, you confirmed in her, naming the child that great parental act and privilege, and allowing her, a foreign woman, to pronounce a name over you that even devout Jews today find difficult or impossible. What trust and intimacy. We thank you that that is possible, was made possible. The plan was in your head, but it was a mystery revealed, as Paul says, through your death in Jesus. We pray for all who are following that way of tears today, who, unlike Peter, did testify and do and have been persecuted by family, friends, neighbours, the state. Warlords of those amongst whom they live. We thank you for that exchange that we who are dead may have life as you who are life became dead. <coughs> we who are false could become true <coughs> as you who are true to come all that is evil and wrong. We who are broken receive wholeness as you who are whole and holy came crushed and broken. <coughs> and so the list goes on. We pray for your peoples and those you love, the other, the foreigner of all ethnicities and religions in that place where you were torn by humanity's hatred one for another as you stood for peace and unity and hope. With Operation World, that prayer is echoed. Hot spots of Asia, we are looking at issues affecting continents. The writers of Operation World say that all international efforts to break a viable peace have ultimately failed. And pray for all parties involved in the confrontation <clears throat> and for all organisations and world leaders attempting to fuse the situation we pray for fairness, truth, honesty, <clears throat> humour and for all those in all fields who despite all things are working with Arab, Jew, Christian, Palestinian, <clears throat> Israeli whatever labels each different faction put on themselves, often in secret. We pray a blessing in all these bridge building works. And we thank you that 
evangelism is <coughs> bringing forth a spiritual first fruit. <coughs> Excuse me, and in some cases breakthrough. <coughs> Excuse me, amongst previously unevangelized peoples in Asia, such as Bengali, the Vietnamese, Burmese, Kazakh, Kurd, Kyrgyz, and others. Also smaller peoples in the region of North Vietnam, Laos, Myanmar, Yunnan. As the Christian Action Research Education feed hasn't uh, popped up yet, we'll pray with Barnabas Fund. Christians in the tumultuous Democratic Republic of Congo face a potential new threat from a little-known Islamist group which has called for volunteers to wage jihad and turn the country into an Islamic state. We pray the Prince of Peace will bring an end to the fighting in that vast country which seems beyond human ability to achieve. From Green Christian, a study by SCS Global Services, commissioned by fashion designer Stella McCartney, compares the environmental performance of 10 man-made cellulose fibres. It concludes that the choice of raw material is key in determining the environmental profile of these materials. Fibres made from Belgian flax emerge as environmentally preferable, together with the viscose, also known as rayon, produced from recycled clothing. Asian production from Canadian forest pulp, Chinese production from Indonesian forest pulp and Indian cotton linter pulp in China had the heaviest environmental footprint among the 10 scenarios. The findings will be fed into all products bearing the Stella McCartney brand. We thank you for that, we pray it will be more widely known and that so-called environmentally friendly or sustainable fibres, fibres that are promoted as such, truly are. We pray that the whole production and uh, waste life of these fibres and the products made from them will be taken into account by organisations which I pray would follow Stella McCartney's lead in making those analyses. benefits we pray for social services the children's centre local homes and hospitals as they serve our communities pray for their staff frontline and management <coughs> that they will be able to put in their bids sort their budgets raise funds to not only maintain current operations but maybe evil even increase as they are able <coughs> And we thank you for our church membership for Jenny and Warren, Mike and Pam, Penny and Dave, Anne and John, Bob, Susan, Timothy, Gerald and Valerie, Martin and Anne, Pam, Eve, Tessa, David and Wendy, Christine, Richard, June, Robin, Peter and Wendy, Heather, Derek, Jill, Roger and Hilary as half of the church membership in Ermoyne. We pray a blessing of health, wealth and prosperity on them <coughs> for salvation, healing and deliverance. And we pray for those that don't yet know you, that you don't be drawn to faith. That same converting, life-changing faith that St Paul experienced, as we were reminded yesterday. <clears throat> we pray for those amongst these who are finding things difficult, that they will call on you and hear your prayer. Those that believe, and that you will hear their prayer. But those that believe on you will be supportive and prophetic in their offers of help. We pray for those that are living well, that they will be reminded of your blessing in their circumstance. And be prepared to share with those around them from what they have. And that that will be a blessing. We thank you for the time, talents, money, gifts, faith that those we have named do share with their communities and those further afield. We continue to pray for the establishment of 
um, a small group, life group, call it what you will, in that place. <coughs> as a focus of care within the community of study and prayer. Alongside the more formal liturgical gatherings in the building, St Michael's. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, who sent your Apostle Paul to preach the Gospel and gave him Timothy and Titus to be companions, his companions in faith, grant that our fellowship in the Holy Spirit may bear witness to the name of Jesus, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs>